Hey RK, welcome to our new sermon series in the book of Ruth. Um, I'm really excited. I think if you've been with us for a little while, we've journeyed all the way through Joshua from the beginning of the year, and then we took a little quick pit stop in the book of Judges last week, and then to kind of anticipate or to plan for uh, the book of Ruth. And I'm really excited for this book because I think it's really fitting. I also, this is becoming, or maybe it already is, maybe my favorite book in all of scripture because it's, there's so many elements to it that I just am falling in love with, and I'm so excited to share that with you over the course of the next four weeks or so. I wanted to kind of introduce the book and the reason why there's a video and an intro um, is because I think with all that is happening in the book, in order for us to really explain it, there's some things that I think you're going to have to do previous to Sunday or prior to kind of prepare for so that we can kind of go in and through and I'll tell you about those things. But let me first introduce um, kind of why I love this book and why I'm so excited and kind of maybe whet your appetite a little bit about the book of Ruth. Three reasons why I really love this book and it's becoming one of my favorites, if not my favorite book in all of scripture. The first, it's it's tailor-made for a movie. It's like a movie. There's so many elements. There's drama, there's suspense, there's tension, there's victory, there's tragedy, there's suffering, like everything. It pulls at your heartstrings. There's even a romance in the middle of it. Like it's got everything that you could possibly want. It's basically, if you could think of a movie that would be one of my favorites, this would be it. If they made this into a movie, it would immediately, assuming good acting and all that stuff, become one of my favorite movies of all time. It just has every element you can think of, of a really captivating story. And I just love that. It's, and it's all real. It's all from scripture. And I, and I just absolutely love that. So the first, I'm excited to share with you a story that I think we're just going to just fall in love with because of just the different elements that's in it. The second reason that I really love this book is because the characters and the book is just so real. Um, We talked about last week how the book of Judges is very relevant for our day in terms of the way and the society of the Judges. Well, again, this book happens in the time of the Judges, in a time where there was no king and everyone could do whatever it is that they wanted and everyone was doing whatever it is that they wanted. And so we live in a world like that. And within that kind of a time period comes this story. And I love just the way that that Ruth and Naomi and, and Boaz and the other characters, how they're how real they are. They're the realest in so many ways. They, You get a picture of fallenness, you get a picture of, like I said, suffering and tragedy and sin, and they're not all put together. They're flawed in so many ways, and yet God does these amazing things. They're just the most real look at biblical characters. If you ever wondered how God might be moving in you, or how God might use someone like you, or um, you know how God might you know redeem your sins and things of that nature, this book is really for you, because the characters in there are just so relatable. They're so honest, and they're so authentic, and they're so real. So I'm hoping that you'd fall in love with the characters of this book and really be able to relate and see yourself in them in so many different ways. And the third reason, keeping with that kind of real theme, I love the way that this book portrays God. Now, interestingly, you'll find out uh, as we go through this book that God is actually not a character in the book in the way that he is in Judges and Joshua. Right? In Judges and Joshua, and even before, God is an active character. He comes out in, 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 the, in, the, kind of in the storyline, he speaks, he, he gives action, he's doing things. Obviously in Joshua, you saw him kind of punish people for sin, he's you know, defeating Jericho and doing all of these things. He's such an active member. Yahweh speaks left and right, but here he doesn't. He's mentioned primarily mostly in chapter 1 as someone that does, but he doesn't actually actively enter into the story. He doesn't speak directly. He doesn't act impactfully. He doesn't do any of these things. And the characters are so aren't calling out to God and saying, God, do this or God, help me the way that Samson does and judges and so on and so forth. He is in some ways absent. And yet he is the central figure of the book. He is the one around which everything happens. He, as we'll talk about throughout the four weeks, he is the bringer of hope. That's kind of a microcosm of the book itself. He, Yahweh, brings hope. Hope for the hopeless is one of the themes that you'll see throughout. And I love that because in so many ways for us, that's how we are with God too, aren't we? We live in a world where God doesn't speak actively to us most of the time, if ever. We live in a world where things happen left and right, good and bad. And yet we're wondering a lot of the times, where is God or what is he doing? Right? If things are going great, maybe you praise Him. Maybe you're just enjoying life, so on and so forth. But when things are going bad, you're wondering, where is God? What is He up to? Right? We wonder. 
how we can trust this God that we can't see, how we can hear this God that we quote unquote can't actually audibly hear, how we relate to a God that seems so distant and not here. Well, again, in the book of Ruth, because he's not there, he's not actively in the story, and yet his fingerprints and his actions are woven throughout the story, I hope we'd be able to get a glance at how we might better understand and relate to God even in our own time. So I'm excited for that as well. If we, I think, are honest about our approach to the book of Ruth, I think by the end and when we're all said and done in a month from now, I think we'll recognize how much of a gift this little book is. And so I'm hoping that you'll journey with us and I'm hoping that you'll kind of you know, come week by week and, and be prepared and really engage in the ways that I think um, is going to be helpful um, and so that we can get the most out of this book and really learn. And uh, we've been saying this a lot, but I think God has been really good to us and faithful to us in the ways that he's provided for us within the midst of this pandemic. There's a lot of this that speaks, I think, to where a lot of our hearts are at. I'm so excited for that. So now having said that, I'm going to ask you to kind of help me and help all of us and just kind of engage in a way that would be most helpful for you. Um, one of the things about this book of Ruth is that uh, it's, it's a story that's kind of meant to be read all the way through, but we're going to take it week by week, chapter by chapter, chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4. And even throughout, you'll hear me say, don't read on ahead because I want us to really fully immerse ourselves in the story of the moment, in the chapter of the week, right? And so in doing so, I think what I recognize is that this book, there's so much to it. It's four short chapters. It's not very long at all, but man, there's so much story here. And in order for us to unpack it, we're going to need to kind of walk through it verse by verse. So one thing that you won't see me do, and one of the reasons why I'm going to give you some of the tips uh, or the kind of the instructions later on, is that you're not going to see me or hear me give an intro and kind of give an overview. As soon as the sermon starts, we're going to just go jump right into verse 1 and just start breaking it down verse by verse. You're going to hear me say, okay, in verse 1 it says this and then it means this. And there, it's really necessary because there's so much more to this story than what you kind of read just kind of on the surface. If you don't dig into the background of it, I think there's a lot that you're going to miss. So we're just going to kind of jump in to give as much background info as we can to really bring this movie, this story to life so that we can best understand it. So here's my, uh, here's a few instructions that I'm hoping uh, that you'll do for this entire sermon series that I think is going to be the best and most helpful for all of you as we go through the book of Ruth. The first, before you arrive on Sunday, I'm going to need for you to have read the book, read the chapter, excuse me. The chapter for the week. So this coming week by Sunday, I, I would hope that you would have read through chapter one and then the following Sunday read through chapter two and so on and so forth. I want you to really take it and kind of go verse by verse and just really go and, and, and dig in. Open up to chapter one this week between now and Sunday and read it and underline and, and highlight and kind of notate before you get to the sermon so that when we go through verse by verse, you'll have already familiarized yourself, familiarized yourself with the story. I encourage you to underline and circle different things like names, places, dates, different repetitions you see, different themes, kind of things that jump out at you. You can put question marks in there, you can put exclamation marks, so on and so forth. Don't try to figure out kind of lessons, but just mark the things that jump out to you because then hopefully we'll be able to walk through those. So first, take it, the chapter for the week, and then read verse by verse and kind of have a familiarization of the book before you come um, on Sunday. Second, I think each week, uh, hopefully on a Tuesday night, maybe maybe at 6 p.m., I think uh, details will be uh, in the bottom or you'll see some announcements. We're going to kind of have a recap session. Um, so following this week, probably on this Tuesday, maybe at 6 o'clock uh, or something like that, again, more details to come. We're going to have a quick little Zoom kind of like detailed dive in for those of you who maybe have some more questions and some recap. And so we might be able to do that um, and, and just kind of be able to recap through this book. And then thirdly, what I would like for you to do is to watch um, the video for the devotion prior to because Pastor Goose or myself are going to be digging in a little bit into um, just kind of uh, maybe an element that we didn't, we weren't able to cover on Sunday in the sermon, but just a, just a deeper dive into a, an element of the book. And again, just engaging more with that story so you can kind of pray through the book. Um, needless to say, I'm really excited. Uh, I'm anticipating a lot of the things that I think God is going to do in and through this 
book. I know that I've been learning so much as I've been studying this book and preparing it for y'all. So um, again, I encourage you, if you're a YAG leader, um, I encourage you, maybe you might even want to watch this video um, and kind of do some of the reading together. That might be an idea, just kind of as you walk through. But I'm hoping that you will engage and that these week's sermons will be a, a way for us to really deep dive into the story. So that not only do we know the story like the back of our hands, and then we'll be able to really learn, I think, who God is, who we are, and just how we might best live, particularly in a world like the one that we're living in today. So thank you for watching this. Thank you for joining us um, through and through. Um, I pray that this book will be a blessing to you. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to sharing this time with you um, and being able to engage with you in all the different ways that God will do. So bless you. Um, we'll see you on Sundays or for the Sundays for the next month. And yeah, may God really speak to you through the book of Luke. Bye.